we've had a particular commenter spreading a lot of uh, very interesting uh, opinions. Yeah. And so this video in particular is going to be focused on her belief in a fairly abusive ABA. We're going to read some of her comments, but we could have just talked about this ourselves and... And believe me, we could have. We could have. We have lots of opinions on this subject, but we wanted to give you more than just us. Our... So we are excited to go to Dr. Spenlove and get a professional opinion on these comments as well, because it's one thing for us to say, yeah, that's ridiculous, which we've said that many times in the comments. <laughs> so we, we comment and reply to everything on our channel. Yeah, so we if, love your comments, so yeah. keep commenting. So keep commenting down. But in this case, with this particular user that I've been arguing back and forth with, it, it's becoming so time-consuming that it's like, be so much better to just shoot a video on this. There's a lot of people that we fear may believe a lot of the comments that she is putting in because there's a lot of half truths and um, you know things that she uses and talks about. So and we do understand that this is a very controversial subject, and so we do want to encourage your comments, but please make them respectful because obviously people are going to have very strong opinions on this subject. <laughs> So we have had a particular um, commentator on our channel who has really been promoting some specific techniques to like force children to act a certain way. And so we just, I just want to read a couple of her comments and um, get your response on this. So this commentator says, ABA mild electric impulse is to electrocution the same as a gentle slap to a violent blow. The kids just get sudden, very weak, painful, slightly stimuli, and so they stop doing actions that ruin their life. The same way as touching a warm iron is painful but prevents burns. Children always cry when their intention to dominate the surrounding do not end with success. At the moment, you are heading to the only one long-term result, a lifetime of isolation, dependency, and mind-suppressing drugs. Getting a child out of autism, even with some limited PTSD, which won't happen. The stories are largely made up. In any case, it's a better long-term outcome. So what professional opinion do you have that you would like to share with people? It's not anywhere in the realm of ABA to punish. Aversive uh, contingency is a, uh, it's a true principle in behavioral management. Uh, but we don't use it in ABA therapy for kids with autism. Um, it's used in training dogs, shock collars, sprays with a water bottle, stop a dog from peeing on, on the carpet. Uh, people, people can still use aversive technique in behavior management when we're dealing with things, but it's not part of ABA. It was removed. And, and that's, that's a comment on the historical context of autism in general and the treatments for it. Um, over the years, our understanding of autism has increased exponentially. And as we increase our understanding of what it is and how it functions and, and whatnot, we have also increased in effectiveness of treatments. And the aversive stuff was taken out because it truly doesn't have as much uh, effect on improving functioning for a child as the positive reinforcement schedules do. Anybody who still practices aversive technique with a child with autism is not just out of date. Uh, but they are at risk of, of lawsuit and other difficulty because if you harm a child in the process of therapy, you're liable for it. And you can be, you can be uh, criminally convicted of child abuse. So any ABA provider knows that. And every ABA provider who is well-trained and has good certification will not use aversive technique because if you get into the literature and you read studies over the years, the problems of yesteryear, kids having ABA and feeling trauma after, traumatized afterwards, or using aversive technique having not as great of outcomes, it's been studied, it's known. So we've moved forward, we have advanced in our understanding and use of this treatment. If you reward a kid for his behavior, you're gonna see more of that behavior, and it's gonna be more effective than if you try to punish, punish, punish. Punishment-based strategies are less effective than the reward-based strategies. So this individual who is purporting to use aversive technique or punishment strategies to, quote, cure autism um, is lying to us, uh, is not telling the truth. Okay, so in response to a video, a little short mini vlog that I did, I did a replacement item for Ezra, so he was chewing on his shirt 
and I got one of those um, necklaces that's made for chewing and just kind of put those in his mouth to see, hey, you can do this instead of ruining your shirt. And I, it was like a two minute little video. You can see that, that here. And this was her response. Why such prejudice? You have not tried, but already made the conclusion. It works if a parent knows what to do. Why does it work with puppies and kittens? Do you consider your child to be below the intellectual level of a four month old puppy? Do you think you respect him enough? So lacking in belief in his abilities. Just Google puppy chews on clothes and follow the advice. Puppies do not understand human speech. Lovas with his terrible therapy, we called it terrible, so she's quoting us cured 47% of his severe patients in one year, precisely because of the adverse AVA therapy that does not involve adverse will not give the cure. Okay, so she's saying that mm -hmm. the AVA therapy now that's more play-based won't work, but you have to go back to the 80s or 70s or whatever. Okay. Here and will not give any meaningful result, and it is obvious on your kids, ABA keeps them in their disorder. The original ABA was very effective. It cures. The modern ABA is useless. This, this person making these comments is clearly misinformed because Pavlov is not the person who created the techniques that we use in ABA. Pavlov created a kind of behavioral intervention called classical conditioning. He's the famous guy who his first research was studying the saliva glands of dogs and then that dog was classically conditioned to salivate every time a bell went off so classical conditioning is something you can use in a way to pair stimuli with response to teach a new behavior okay that is not what aba is aba is based in the realm of radical behaviorism bf skinner created that one so a positive reinforcement is something where you add something to a behavior to make that behavior return. ABA uses Skinnerian radical behaviorist principles. It has nothing to do with classical conditioning. So for example, ABA therapists uses this thing called pivotal response training. And in pivotal response training, let's say you have a bag of toys and you as a person with autism, you're taking toys out of the bag, mm -hmm. okay? You're taking it out, okay. Okay, so you're taking them out and suddenly I close the bag, okay? And you still want to take them out. Yeah. So I'm looking for a pivotal response. I want you to say something like more or open or toy. So say open. Open. And I reward you immediately okay, with another toy. So you're teaching me that when I say a word verbally, specific word, I can get what I want. Or a gesture or a grunt or, you know. It, or even like trying to look at you. Yeah, because when, when you're doing ABA therapy with a kid and pivotal response training is involved, the kid's not going to say, oh, may I have another block, please? Right? <laughs> that's where we're headed. Can you please open the back? Correct. <laughs> like, that's where we're trying to head. But the very first thing of, uh, we open. Mm -hmm. Because you can shape a behavior with, with reinforcement schedules. Okay? And that's, that's radical behaviorism. That's Skinnerian radical behaviorism, teaching a child with autism to say open because I am incrementally rewarding them each time they make a move, a grunt, a sound or an eye, eye contact of any kind, to get more, I reward more. Um, and then it just seems that the person who makes the comment about Lovas and, and these things about aversive consequence and whatnot, um, very archaic, stuck in a, a time period that is far gone. So I wouldn't trust it. You can find out more about, about appropriate treatments by accessing the appropriate websites, like the American Society of Aut for Autism. Uh, National Foundation of Autism Research. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of uh, universities doing research too. I found a, an article out of Pepperdine, Seven Myths of ABA, where it contradicts these ideas that it's not scientific, it harms children, it's just like training a dog. Uh, it's just not true. ABA is, is the best treatment because of its outcome, not because of, of technique that would be less effective. It has improved and we have great data to show that ABA, when applied properly, makes more changes to the brain and the behavior of a child than if you're doing watered down ABA or old school ABA, where there's aversive technique being used. Don't listen to anybody who says that you have to shock them or give them a slight slap or whatever that comment was about, it's just, as, it's just like getting a tiny slap on the face, not a big clobber, uh, that's ludicrous. That is uh, 
unscientific, uninformed garbage. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. <laughs> We used to live in an RV and we traveled to all the national parks in the US. In the RV, we learned a lot and we post daily of our unique normal. Please consider subscribing. So the main thing that's dangerous, I think, for this topic, um, especially like this person who's promising to cure, cure autism, right? Which we're gonna be doing a video on that too. So it's all about like this freedom versus control, right? Like, yeah, you can, you can make someone do something, but what's the long-term effects? And so we've had a lot of, uh, actually adults commented on our channel and let us know, um, stuff about what, what actually is the long-term effects of having, uh, control like ABA, uh, abrasive, abusive, uh, ABA. Um, and so I wanted to read one of those, um, uh, comments from our channel as a survivor of very abusive 80s ABA therapy to stop my non-harmful stimming again thinking like you know Simon and playing with Holly's hair or yeah, chewing on your shirt or whatever you know like like those things that aren't life-threatening for the them or anyone else right um just wanted to say thank you for not stopping your boys non-harmful stims I have had my hands taped down. I've been strapped into my seat, prevented from rocking. I've been made to bite a spoon, all supposedly for my own good. So I'd sit still and have quiet hands, feet, and mouth. So I'm, and then he goes on and says, I slowly, I'm slowly learning to allow myself to stim when I feel safe and I'm in a safe place, but I still hear my teacher's voices in my head when I do so. So like, again, yes, we could force our kids to do things. And yes, I believe that, you know, there's certain things that we could stop them to do and, and like, oh, that would be success, right? No, that's not success. Um, the long-term ramifications of that are, are terrible. And, and this person attests to that. So, um, it's all about the, the freedom. Like if you force someone to do something that they don't want to do, it's always going to come back in the end. Like there's always going to be resentment. Yep. You're always going to hurt the relationship. And you know, with, with a child and parent relationship, there's trust that needs to be there. And it, and once they lose that trust, it's gone. Like, yeah, that's, it's hard to get back. Another good comment that I liked from our, our channel that kind of talked about this whole thing of like, um, you know, the abrasive or forceful ABA and how in the long term it just doesn't work was, was this one here. Punishment is really only going to take you so far. It stopped having an effect on me from about the age 9 or 10. I became really hard-headed and fixed in my own opinions. The only way my parent would get me to do something I didn't want to do would be by giving me a logical argument as to why it would be the best course of action. If they did, I would follow above and beyond. It's really good to hear like those people's opinions, you know, because he's he's been through stuff, but he realizes that. I mean, it's just. I mean, it makes sense. If someone tried to force me to do something, even as a young child, no one likes that. It hurts the relationship. It hurts lots of things, and so and it hurts them as a person. And so, if you want to build up your child, you need to do more like positive reinforcements, and that's what ABA does now. Yeah, and the studies, as Dr. Spenlow said, are conclusive that the positive reinforcement um, has better long-term effects and is more effective as well. And so it's great to hear Dr. Spenlow say that that's not even ABA. Like It's not. It's not. So like that's illegal now. And so to hear someone, again, who hasn't done the research or seen the, the data behind this type of ABA and how it is not as effective and has terrible long-term effects. Um, that's why we needed to do this video to share and, and why there's so much confusion around ABA, right? Like why, why so many autistic individuals have a bad taste in their mouth about it because they initially had this type of ABA that this lady is prescribing that you still do, which is just crazy. We got a comment that said, stimming is like a cigarette. We responded to that comment in this video and our autism playlist this year.